Hi, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Eunice. And today we're going to show you what to do to take care of someone with COVID-19 in your own home. Both of us are not PhDs in infectious disease. Today we're going to take information from two main sources. The first one is Harvard Medical School's uh, Guide for COVID-19 for Medical Students. And the other one is Ali Health Group's research on best practices in hospitals in China handling COVID-19. Okay, but since we know that this is for home, we've taken all the useful parts and put it into something that you can do right in your own home. I believe with this information, you'll be better prepared, less fearful, less anxious. And this is good for overall recovery of any illness. The first thing we need to talk about is the zone concept. So this is where the patient stays in one area and everyone else stays in another area. So we want to make sure that we know what to do going in and out of this area as well as what to do for the patient when they're inside. What we'll talk about now is what to do when you go into the patient's area. First of course, you need to make sure the patient is correctly attired. They can wear any clothes they like, but they need to have the surgical mask on all the time, which is this one, the basic mask. And for the person going in, they need to be prepared in this way. You need to have this kind of stuff ready, okay? They're all pretty easy to get. When you're going into the contaminated area or the patient's isolation area, you start from head to toe, you need a something to protect your hair from any droplets, right? So it's a shower cap should be fine. Next, we move down. You, as the caregiver, need to use an N95 mask. This is to protect yourself. Then, you add face protection. This is actually the best DIY face protection I found on any video online. It's actually a, a, a 100 plus bottle or any kind of soft drink. 1.5 liter. Chop off the top and bottom and it actually wraps around your face like this. So you can go in, droplets don't get to you. Next, you also need latex gloves which are pretty easily available. And finally, you need to have a certain set of clothes that you only use when you go into the patient's room. So we'll probably wear some long sleeve clothes and long pants that we use only when we go into the patient's room. When we leave the patient's room, we dump these clothes and disinfect them immediately. Okay, now I'm gonna show you what we've learned are the best practices that we learned from hospitals of how to put on your protective equipment when you go and see the patient. That's right, so they're put on in this order with putting on your clothes, cap, N95 mask, face protection or goggle, and then gloves. When you take it off, you go in the opposite way. Gloves, face protection, N95 mask, cap, and then clothes. When you take it off, you need to do this. Get a Ziploc bag and put the gloves and the cap into the bag. Seal it up. Get another bag. Put it inside and seal the outer Ziploc bag. For the clothes, you'll need to get a bucket of bleach solution. Once you've taken it off, immediately put it inside the bucket and let it soak. For the N95 mask, ideally you can change it each time that you see the patient. But if you can't, wipe it down with a disinfectant solution along with the goggles or face protection. As you notice, you'll need some kind of disinfecting solution. The most common one that we found in the best practices is regular household bleach, but at the right concentrations. The bleach is usually about 6% sodium hydrochloride. For measurement, we're going to use a tablespoon because everyone knows what that is. For the low concentration one, which is what you use to mop the floor, wipe the walls, disinfect the room, soak the clothes, it's one tablespoon of regular household bleach per one liter of water. For the high concentration one, which is what you use to wipe spills of uh, saliva or things like that, or disinfect items which may be contaminated by the patient, you use five tablespoons per one liter of water. The next thing you need to know is when you need to send your patient 
to the hospital for closer monitoring. The first thing is that if they are breathing more than 30 times per minute, that's an indication that they need more close supervision. And the second thing is that if their blood oxygen level falls below 93%, and you can measure this using a pulse oximeter, which you can get for about $100. So if they are displaying these two things, it's time to get them to the hospital for some closer monitoring. As some of you might know, one of the ways that this disease can be transmitted is through fecal matter, which means poop. So, to keep the entire sewage system clean, you need to actually disinfect poop from the patient before you flush it. Again, bleach is the answer, and you need a little bit, maybe slightly less than half a tablespoon should be fine. You pour it into the toilet bowl and let it sit for one and a half hours before you flush. The next thing we need to learn is how to wash patients' clothes as well as fabrics, things like their towels and bed sheets. So you'll need to use the low concentration of bleach solution. And wash it at a temperature of 90 degrees for at least 30 minutes. Most washing machines can do this, but if yours can't, you'll need to boil the water beforehand. And remember to wash these clothes separate from your normal washing. Now we'll talk about how to disinfect the patient's room. In hospitals, from what I've learned, it's done about three times a day. But for us, maybe one time a day is enough. You'll need the low concentration bleach solution. And you use that to mop the floor as well as wipe the walls. The next thing you need to disinfect is stuff that the patient uses. Maybe their tabletop or their utensils which are more used than the rest of the room. For this, you need the high concentration bleach and you wipe those down and you dispose the wipes immediately. A good suggestion is to wipe the cleanest stuff first, the stuff that they use the least, moving on to the stuff they use the most. And this is what you need to do to disinfect any bodily fluids from the patient. This means if they've coughed, any spit or any blood. First, you need to take some tissue or gauze and absorb the spill. After that, use the high concentration bleach solution and disinfect the area. You'll need to dispose of the tissue or the gauze in double layer bags and also sanitize and disinfect any container that you've used with the bleach solution. The final area of the room we need to disinfect is the air of the room because the virus can float, right? So, we're going to use ultraviolet light for that. Ultraviolet light, the ones that kill the insects or those that disinfect other things can be easily got. Ultraviolet bulbs are not terribly expensive. However, make sure you don't look at them. They are bad for the eyes. So, don't look at the bulb while you're using it. That one should be done for about an hour a day, a few times a day. If you yourself get exposed, like some of the patients, let's say saliva gets on your skin, don't worry too much, it doesn't really transmit through skin. You do need to use the alcohol-based hand sanitizer, at least 70 plus percent alcohol, leave it there for 3 minutes on top of the spit, and then wipe off, wash off under uh, running water with soap. But if things get into your eye, then you need to rinse with saline. To make your own saline, you dissolve about 1 teaspoon of salt in 2 cups of warm or hot water and that concentration is good enough to flush your eyes out and you should be alright. Well, I hope you've learned something today. And with these tips, I believe that you'll be very well equipped to manage someone at home with COVID-19 with the minimal risk of infecting others. But of course, as I said before, we are not experts at infectious disease. But if you are and you think there's something we can do better or there's more information that you think we should share, please contact us below and we'll be happy to improve our next video.